These are 20 illustrator tips to become a successful architecture student. Because the industry standard is clean and clear visuals that can convey complicated concepts. Look closely because many designers create amazing drawings because they use Illustrator and they implement all of these tips. But what are these techniques that they know that we don't and we need to figure it out if we want to stand out? Good news for us, it's actually quite simple and it doesn't require any fancy tools or Illustrator experience. The process follows a couple steps and this video will walk you through all of them and if you practice these tips daily for three months your architectural life might change dramatically the basics of using illustrator is knowing how to export vector data and to do that i'm using my sketchup model to export pdfs illustrator supports both pdf and eps files go into your styles and choose the hidden line style Go into edit and make sure that edges and profiles are checked and then uncheck dashes. Then go to file, export 2D graphic and then change the file type from JPEG to either PDF or EPS. Press export and then OK. Open up your illustrator and create a new document. The width and height of your document will depend on your illustration. I'm going to create a square illustration so I'm going to go with 4000 pixels for both the width and the height. The rest of the settings are okay, so go ahead and press create. Drag and drop your illustration to your canvas and then size it up to fit your whole board. And you can press shift so that you don't distort the proportions of the drawing. Now a crucial step in using Illustrator is setting up your custom workspace because if this is not set up correctly, you won't know how to use Illustrator. Here at the top, you can choose the workspace and I have found that Essential Classics is the best one for architectural drawings. And I'm going to reset mine to make sure that mine looks just like yours. Right click on libraries and close that because you're hardly ever going to use it. Go and drag layers all the way to the top because this is the most essential part of your workspace. Also drag brushes and swatches. Now this is where a lot of people freak out with Illustrator, you can see that this drawing, you can't edit the individual lines, you can just move it around here in the properties and embed. Whenever you add something into Illustrator, you're most likely going to have to embed it. Go ahead and release the mask as well. Also ungroup. Some PDFs will need you to do this a couple of times. So keep releasing and ungrouping until you can edit all of the vectors in your drawing. Using Illustrator is a complete nightmare if you don't organize your drawings into layers. Press this button here to create new layers and then rename them. To move vectors from one layer to another, you first have to select it. And you can see here at the right, there's a tiny square. If you click once on it and then drag it to the other layer, you can see that the vectors have moved to that layer. Do that to the entire drawing until all of the drawing is split into layers. And I like to hide the layers that I'm done with so I know which part of the drawing still needs to be organized. Double check that all of the layers are done correctly by hiding and revealing the layer using this eye icon. Once that's done, you're good to go. Line weights are an essential part in any architectural drawing. So I'm going to select all of the drawing and choose a very light stroke to begin with. If you zoom in to the corners of your lines, you can see that they're not finished correctly. So to fix that, select everything again. And if you click on the stroke here, you can adjust the cap and the corner of your lines. Sometimes when you're so focused in a drawing, you can work so much in the detail of something and then forget how it affects the entire illustration. To make sure that never happens, go into Window and click on New Window. You can see that it has the same name of the file that we're using right now. Go back into window and this time go into arrange and then tile. Now you have two windows for the same illustration so that you can zoom one out and the other one can be focused on more of the details. You can see that some parts of the illustration are extending outside of the canvas and that can be very distracting as you work and add a lot of complexity with layers. So to fix that, create a new layer and call that frame and move that to the top of your layers. 
Create a square that fits your canvas using the rectangle tool. Press I and select the color of the Illustrator background. Switch between the fill and the stroke of the shape and then increase the stroke until it covers the parts that extend outside of the canvas. To make the stroke align to the outside of the shape, click on stroke and go to align stroke and choose outside. You can then lock this layer and you won't even know that it exists. Another easy way is to go into view and click on trim view to hide anything that extends outside of the canvas. Although sometimes I do create parts of the drawing in this empty space, so sometimes I have to go between trim view and normal view, but with your frame layer you don't have to do that. So you get to choose which one works for you. Now this is something that I didn't know existed in Illustrator, so I'm telling you now and you can thank me later. Basically Illustrator comes with patterns that work so well with architecture. I have found that the basic graphics ones such as dots, lines and textures work the best for architecture, but feel free to explore all of the other swatches and patterns that are within Illustrator. To use these patterns, I'm first going to create pattern palette using the rectangle tool. Hold Alt while you drag the shape to copy it. And then you can press Ctrl D on your keyboard to repeat the distance. Select the square and then go into the pattern and click on it. And once you have your patterns ready, you can start applying that to your drawing. So you would apply patterns the same way you apply color in Illustrator using the Live Paint Bucket tool. Select your drawing and then press K on your keyboard to activate the Live Paint Bucket. Using the eyedropper tool or shortcut I, select or sample the pattern and then you can start applying that to your drawing. If you can't apply the color or pattern, that means that Illustrator is not recognizing the surface as a closed shape, so make sure that you don't have any gaps in your drawing. The Life Paint Bucket tool always creates a group, so if you want to edit any of the colors or patterns, click on Expand and then Ungroup. What if I want to modify the pattern? I first have to select all of the shapes, so instead of selecting each surface one by one, you can go into Select, Same, and then Appearance, to select all of the surfaces with that pattern. You can use the advanced selection tool to speed up your process with Illustrator as you can select things with the same transparency, line weight, color, fill. Right now everything is in the same line weight so if I select same stroke weight it's going to select the entire drawing but you get the point. Back to my patterns, I want to modify the scale and the rotation of this pattern. Go into transform and then scale. Make sure that the preview is checked and then uncheck transform objects to apply this transformation only on the pattern and, and not the shape. 50% should be fine. Click on preview to make sure that you're happy with it and then press OK. This time I want to rotate the pattern so I'm going back to transform this time rotate and select 30 degrees because I know this is an isometric drawing and voila! Let's do the same rotation to this pattern. Hmm, something looks strange. That's because this pattern needs to be an isometric pattern. So let's undo that. This time go into transform and then shear. The shear angle is minus 30 and the axis is 0 degrees. Go back to rotate and rotate to 30 degrees. Now you have an isometric pattern. You can alternate between the rotation and the shear angle. So minus 30 and 30, you can alternate those to change the direction of the isometric pattern. 
And now you can scale it and modify it as normal and it will still be isometric. The previous tips were for beginners and I would argue that only 1% of architects know all of the following tips. And if you happen to know all of these tips, let me know in the comments down below so that I can fire my assistant. This is the most essential part of this entire process which is linking Illustrator to Photoshop to have a very seamless workflow. So I'm going to start with a new document on Photoshop and I know the size of my Illustrator document which is 4000 pixels by 4000 pixels. Go into file, place linked and place your Illustrator file. The drawing should fit perfectly because the sizes of both documents are the same. And now the magic happens whenever you hide something in Illustrator. Press Ctrl S to save the document it will automatically update in Photoshop. If your file has stage fright like mine, right click on the line drawing layer and then update it there. So now I can apply textures, patterns, effects in Photoshop. The quality will be amazing since it's a linked Illustrator file. You get the best of both worlds. Chill it out, take it slow, then you'll rock out the show. What if? The illustrator patterns are just not enough and you want to create your custom one that's also a very simple process it's random let's say grass texture using the brush tool select all of the shapes go to object pattern and then make you can adjust the initial shapes to make the pattern more seamless You can also change the tile type. Once you're happy with it, press done. And now you have a custom pattern in your swatches that you can use in your drawings. But if you want to use seamless PNG textures as patterns, all you have to do is drag and drop your seamless texture, make sure that's embedded and then drag and drop that into your swatches and that automatically creates a pattern. And now you can apply it easily to your illustration. This might even be easier than Photoshop. This is what I have after I've added textures, colors and patterns to my drawing. But what if I'm not happy with the colors that I've selected? Well, also, Illustrator has its own swatches with some really color palettes. Let's go with Ancient. But if you click on these arrows, you can see that Illustrator has so many other color palettes that you can use. I'm going to use the advanced selection tools that I've mentioned previously to select all of the shapes with the same fill color and then go into the Ancient color palette Click on that, which will apply the fill color. And now you've easily recolored your artwork. But wait, there's an even easier method to recolor your artwork. Make sure that all of the layers are open, select everything, and then click on recolor here. This window pops up that has all of the colors. You can edit it through here. But personally, I find that editing the colors is much easier if you click on this advanced options and then this window pops up. And I encourage all of you out there to really figure out how to use this window right here because it's so, so powerful. As you can select how many colors you want in your drawing, what those individual colors to be. You can even select color palettes and it will automatically apply that to your drawing. Like, what could be easier than this? What if you want to draw isometric objects in Illustrator? And for the life of you, you cannot remember which angles you need to use. Well, Illustrator has got your back with this easy tool. Draw your step using the rectangle tool. Go into Effect 3D and then Extrude and Bevel. You can choose the position of your extrusion. I'm going to go with Isometric Top. Make sure that Preview is checked and then change your extrusion depth. Ta 
that looks like a good enough step that is still an exercise but won't kill you. Expand the appearance and now you can copy your step to create the rest of your staircase. You can also use this tool if you wanted to create some buildings that fill up some empty parts of your drawing. So I'm gonna draw this pitched elevation using the pen tool. Copy and paste this shape and then reflect it using the transform tool. Make sure it's perfectly aligned and then using the shape builder tool you can select both of these shapes to combine them together. You can also use the pathfinder tool. Comment down below and let me know if you want to see part two to this video because I've got so much more tips and the pathfinder tool is insane. Once again we're going to 3d extrude this shape to create a building. You can then expand the appearance scale the building to make sure that it fits your drawing perfectly. You can even change the colors of it to match the buildings that you've 3D modeled. So no one's gonna know that you didn't actually 3D model this. Now, let me show you why I absolutely love Illustrator. Let's say you have this image of the sky standing and you want to add this to your illustration but what do you do it's not vector well does that mean that i'm gonna have to trace this myself draw this man line by line illustrator can trace images like what make sure that the image is embedded press image trace and then press low fidelity image. I don't know if that's how you say it. I mean, it's so close to infidelity and I think this is not the topic. Anyways, the rest is history. This image is now a vector. There's different styles to image trace, but I found that the infidelity one produces the best results. That was sarcasm, by the way. You can't really see my face because I'm only doing a voiceover today. Oopsies. However, there are also amazing websites that offer high quality vectors that you can download for free. One of those websites is Vecteasy. I think you have an allowance of like 10 vectors per day. I can't exactly remember right now, but it has a good selection of vectors. You can search for plants, people, cars, buildings, you name it. So you don't really have to trace or model or draw every single thing yourself because these websites are amazing and can save you so much time. Whenever you download anything from Vecteasy or other websites, any of the assets are usually in groups and I would recommend that you isolate the group when you edit them or enter the isolation mode you can see here at the top so that whenever you're making editing or adjustment to that group it doesn't affect the rest of the layers. The last tip but certainly not the least in any way which is creating custom illustrator brushes especially for planting. I have this group of leaves that I've downloaded from Vecteasy, copy and paste it and move it around, rotate it to make it look organic but come on that's gonna take so much time and it's gonna be so annoying. What you could do instead is create a brush. All you have to do is drag the group onto your brushes and that will create a brush. Make sure that it's a scatter brush and then let's press OK. Use the brush tool, brush a line just to see how this effect looks like. And now we can double click on the brush and start adjusting the settings. I usually make everything random and adjust the size to fit the scale of the drawing except the scatter, it's always at fixed and 0%. Once you're happy with it, press OK and then apply to strokes and now you have your own custom brush which you can paint around, create trees, create shrubs, bushes, you name it. And then if you want to edit this further, you can expand the appearance and then you can change each group. I didn't end up using this brush for this particular drawing. I did use it for this colored elevation, which you can see now, and I could not be happier with the result. And now you know. And this is the final illustration. 
I'll have the video for this illustration linked in the cards if you haven't seen it already. I hope you guys found this video helpful. It would mean so much to me if you guys hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please smash the thumbs up button, it really helps me and it lets me know that you guys really enjoy these types of videos. Also let me know in the comments down below what other software you would like me to tackle next and make it a little more beginner friendly. I'm Rasha Shiruru and I will see you next time.